If you describe how the technology works here, I've heard it described as if Amazon's Alexa keeps you connected to the outside world when you're at home, mm -hmm. your company keeps you connected to your home while you're in the outside world. Right. So fundamentally, what's going on here is it's the combination of 3D sensing um, and deep learning. This makes it possible for us to understand what is what in the environment, to understand that's a dog, and that's a child, and that's a person, and maybe even that's your mother, that sort of thing. Um, this lets us behave intelligently. This, this lets you ask a lighthouse you know, to tell you about the things you care most about. You can literally say, you know, hey, lighthouse, let me know when you see someone at the front door with the dog while I'm out. And it will actually just do that. How much of a market is there for this? Because even though the connected home sounds great, it sounds like a lot of, very few people have actually gone to the trouble to actually connect their home because it is very difficult. At what point does this become mainstream behavior and not niche behavior? So there's millions of home cameras out there right now. And you know they provide a great service in terms of recording data and giving you access to that data. But really what we're doing is making that data useful, making that, you know, giving you actionable insight, giving you information. And that's what people really care about when they get a home camera. And you know, we call this an interactive assistant because it's so much more than that. That you can, you know, you tell it what you care about and it tells you when those things happen. Apple, Amazon, Google, you've got the biggest tech giants also you know, trying to stake out their territory in the world of AI. Max, I'm curious, who's doing it best or is it anyone's game? I mean, right now, I think Amazon is is probably the, the most interesting one. Um, you know, c combined with the, the sort of uptick of people buying these Echo devices, which kind of looked ridiculous when when they were released. I think I think a lot of us were like, who who wants this thing? And uh, and now they're they're really taking off. They the the products that they've announced over the last couple of weeks that involve video are really interesting. And and then when you add calling on top of it, as Amazon just did, it starts to make you think, huh? Like I, maybe maybe this is kind of the next smartphone. Maybe Amazon owns the operating system of the home. Um, what's interesting though is that you also have other players who are who are also making plays at the home. So it's so there's a like Lighthouse. So there's a lot of sort of interesting activity here, but I don't think it's clear, you know, how it shakes out at all. What do you think, Alex? What's the answer to that question? Well you know, we, we see the different offerings in this space as being um, kind of complementary, right? Like it really is that, you know, Alexa is a fantastic way to connect to the outside world when you're at home, and Lighthouse is a fantastic way to connect to the home when you're out in the world. But how many devices am I going to need? Well, it depends what you specifically are looking for, right? Um, you know, if, if what you're most excited about is understanding what's happening at home while you're out, then Lighthouse is a fantastic choice. Are privacy and security issues of concern here? I mean, just the fact that you've got a camera inside your home monitoring you, it sounds a little big brother. So privacy and security are, of course, fundamental to what we're doing, right? This is data from your home, and, and trust is of the utmost important here. Um, so we've built in bank level security measures all across the products, and uh, only you see your data. Max, what's your take on that? I mean, what are you hearing from uh, potential customers? I mean, I think people are getting comfortable with the privacy issues. I mean, you know, I have a Nest camera in my um, in my kid's room, and, uh, you know, Nest is owned by a big company, Google, that makes a lot of money selling data, and yet here I am, you know, using it and, and, and not thinking too much about it. I mean, in a lot of ways, we've we've given up more to these companies um, in terms of privacy than, than anything they could learn from, you know, looking at our homes, I mean, in terms of sort of what's in our email. Um, so I think there's, there's, there's demand for this, people are comfortable with it, and I think what's really interesting here is we're seeing sort of some of these AI things that people have been talking about for a long time, um, you know, machine learning and 3D sensors, those are things that people have been talking about with uh, self-driving cars for, for many years, and, and suddenly we're seeing that technology um, being sold to consumers, um, you know, in this device and, and in devices like it. We're starting to see this, maybe an inflection point where AI is, is, is becoming kind of mainstream.